everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Kyra and I'm here today to open this box and show you what's in it. So I was gonna take this out, but Barb, Barb sent this for me. Barb reached out and was like, hey, I want to send you a copy of Tarot Vampires. And then she messaged me after she sent it and she's like, think garnets. And then I get this box and it's a black box. Uh, she had a sticker like this for the label too, but I don't want to show my address or hers. But, and uh, so I was opening it to take stuff out so it was ready for unboxing because I know it's the Tarot of Vampires. But then she did this whole motif, so I had to show you. So. And here is the label. It says, I hide in the shadows and long for the light, for I am a vampire imprisoned by night. The moon is my sun, the night is my day, blood is my life, and you are my prey. By unknown. And then look. I peeked. What the fuck, Barb? What the hell? This is so cool. Okay, let me... Okay, there's nothing else. Let me move this out of the way. So I'm going to save that box flap. Look at this. Vampire Tears. It looks like she glued it. She put Garnet in a little bottle. Vampire Tears. Bar, this is... Oh my god. I'm... I'm so glad she was like, open it, I want to see your impression, because this is a, like, Barb, you didn't have to do this. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. All right. Let me pause, take the plastic wrap off. We'll leave our vampire tears here. Um, let me just get this all better. Okay. So I wanted to do this unboxing now because... I just had this really incredible experience, which I'm going to talk more about. So I wanted to do this while I was in this still kind of headspace. Oh my god. Holy fuck, that's thick. Look at it. It's a thick boy. It's a thick lady. Woo! This was a major selling point of this deck. Uh, check out, if you guys want, like, super details from someone who's had the deck for a while, check out Lisa's uh, live. It's up above in the cards. Phenomenal. Phenomenal live. Okay. Hold on. We can't forget our vampire tears. Barb, this is ridiculous. I love it so much. Okay. So, here it is. <sighs> So, I don't really know anything about this deck besides the fact that I just, when hearing about the guidebook from Lisa, I just really felt it would be important for my devotional work I've started doing, for my... Fuck off! <laughs> okay, okay. Alright, so... <sighs> Fuck. Fucking shit! Okay. All right. Here's the deal. I had, the thing I just did was I just watched my past life reading I bought. Um, I ordered from Lisa. Lisa's linked up above. Go find her website. Her website will be in the description box. And if you haven't, check it out. It was the most astounding experience. I'm going to talk about it in great detail, I'm sure. Um, because it was just so, it, it just hit all the right spots and I feel incredibly validated and seen and like, like I'm not crazy for, for things. And in it, Lisa said the word surrender about a billion times. So I'm going to count how many times she said the word surrender. There's a project idea I've got anyway. Um, and I don't know when you're seeing this probably soon. So to turn it over, having just watched that, and, and Surrender, and if you don't know, Surrender is my word of the year. Um, 
So to have just watched this reading where um, some of the cards are stuck together, so just gently. To have just watched this reading where surrender was such a theme and that theme of surrender was completely validating and connecting it to my life and where I am now. And then I get this and I, I was going to wait and do this as a live, but then I talked to Barb and she was like, no, pre-recorded it's fine. Cause I didn't want to wait to open this. And I'm doing the boo tarot as a live tonight. And then I get this and I take this out and I turn it over and on the back it says, surrender to your spiritual hunger. There is my word once again. I'm a bit emotional. All right. Now we're going to, I'm going to sit down. This deck is not necessarily super intuitive. Um, but we're going to see how it shakes out. Got the full, I love that. The fool is about jumping and taking risks. And sometimes those are not the best risks, but this, there's an abandon in this card. Oh, there's Pluto. There's the glyph for Pluto. Here's the glyph for Mercury. I don't really know what to say about the magician, but he's beautiful. The high priestess, she's got snake and I believe it was somewhere in her dress she has her glyph um I don't know wow she's really pretty this deck isn't necessarily like a super intuitive one except I feel like she has that look of like Claire cognizance. She's got the look of Claire cognizance of just knowing and understanding something. Like she's just turned and looked at you and is like, "Oh, you're here. You've you've come. I knew you were." But she's not saying it. And I love the backs. The Empress. I'm very I like having some empresses that aren't um carrying that aren't pregnant that's really helpful for me not that I need it to be but it's nice the emperor okay so I want to pause and I want to see what it says because this is my card of the month um so I want to see what it says the earthly father Mars vigorous energy fatherhood leadership okay I'm not going to read that um, all. As the, as the consort of the Empress, the Emperor possesses qualities of opposite of hers. This does not mean they are in conflict, but that they give balance and understanding of themselves to each other. That's extraordinarily interesting. Um, because my year ahead spread cards. This month I have the Emperor. Next month is the Queen of Cups. And then the following month is the Empress. Um, the full positive powers of the Empress and Emperor are realized when each is perfectly balanced within themselves. You may be feeling lost or overwhelmed by emotions, a shadow of the Empress, and you must engage the skills of the Emperor to bring your emotions to a place of harmony. When he appears, it is often a sign that you should be more forthright and look at a situation less emotionally. He can indicate that you must take a firm stand, set your boundaries, and take control of the situation. This not only applies in human relationships, but can also include inner conflicts. He is your fighting spirit and your personal fortress, your inner empire. It is time to pick yourself up and stand defiant, to draw magic energy from your spirit and overflow with confidence. The emperor is a ruler and leader. He takes control of a situation, weighs the facts with a clear and focused mind, then takes action. This is not always... F hmm. The book is telling me off. This is not always fiery action. It is often about being precise and making intelligent plans or setting boundaries and looking at things rationally. The emperor is also the card of Aries. See the ram's head and the onk, like the onk-like necklace, which is the Aries glyph. 
I have a lot of stuff in Aries. This is my card, and it's one of the most shadowy cards in this deck for me, or in decks for me. He can be telling you that now is the time to begin making plans to start a new venture or to spend time away from a situation and recharge your life force and self-assurance. Another message of this card is that we must recognize a person in our lives who bestows these qualities upon us. Perhaps this is a supportive friend, father, or mentor figure we can turn to for guidance and instruction. He also sometimes indicates laws and matters of judgment or justice. Both of those are huge cards for me as well. In relationships, he can indicate a grounded, loving, just partnership with someone who gives us the support of a firm foundation and confidence, or to whom we are a support or an inspiration. Like his title, Son of the Morning, the Emperor grants us the gift to begin a new day, to start things fresh, and in to engage in the excitement of making new plans. Um, I'm not going to read the symbolism, but I'll, I want to read the shadow. As with all the cards in their shadowed aspect, a shadowed emperor can indicate a lack of positive qualities of the card. We should now develop this part of ourselves through diligence and fortitude. Sorry, you might want to see this instead. By organizing thoughts and actions into systematic order, we will begin to see a clear path to what we desire. As the emperor is largely about justice, his shadow side is injustice. Perhaps there is an element of injustice contained in the answer to your question in something or someone in the situation or in yourself. The major arcana are archetypal images within each of us and their shadows often embody those archetypes when those qualities are not yet reconciled within us. Oh, that's good. I need a highlighter. I need a highlighter. Hold on. Hold for highlighter. <sighs> eh. That's such a good line. Pretty good thick paper, not ghosting too much. I wish myself luck when editing this. The negative aspects of the emperor are the lack of its virtue, a lack of courage, responsibility, or independence. The shadow can also indicate domineering or tyrannical behavior, self-righteousness, or selfishness. Other negative elements include stubbornness, impracticability, perfectionism, rashness, or ill temper. As with Mars, the Emperor is also associated with earthly power, conflict, war, and strict laws or regimes. Well, fuck. Okay. I need to sit back down or get sort of comfy. I'm. Thank you, Barb. The Hierophant. I love this. I'm so overwhelmed. But in the best kind, best possible kind of way. The Lovers. The Chariot. Ooh, okay, I'll get to you. Hold on. It's interesting that they don't have the numbers. Um, I, I it kind of throws me a bit. Like it's fine, but it kind of throws me a bit. I love her. There we go. Justice. This is eleven or eight, depending on the system. So in this one, it's eight, which means according to this deck, this is my life path card. Um, in other decks, I'm still connected to justice because justice is Libra and Libra is where my moon sign is. She is fucking hot. The hermit. I was just thinking to myself of how much the rose seems to be meaning something to me. And then I remembered I had a bunch of rose petals that I collected that I never uh, put away. So I'm just going to sprinkle them here. And then this will hopefully remind me to put them the fuck away. 
Oh, it looks so cool. Okay. <laughs> the Wheel of Fortune. Wow, I love these creatures here on the outside and all the colors of the roses. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten roses. Excuse me, rose petal. Strength. Oh. Oh, she is. She is stunning. I don't even know what to. Now, this is interesting. The Hanged Man. It's interesting that it's like. It's like the life is pouring out. Like, my first thought is the life is pouring out of this hanged man. But is that thought my projection of my fears about the hanged man? Is it the life pouring out of the hanged man here? Or is it the poison? The way society has poisoned the hanged man. Is that what is pouring out? As, as he hangs there and has his entire perspective realigned, shifted refocused it can feel a lot like our life is pouring away from us when in fact that's just the livelihood that has been foisted upon us whether we would take it or not so i wonder is it how it seems or is that my own need for personal reflection and growth that i look at this and my first thought is his life is pouring out of him and I know that that's not what the hanged man is actually about. The death card. I love this snake. She's beautiful. Temperance. Ooh. She's using her lifeblood, her very force of life itself, or unlife, in the case of vampires, to, to temper, to alchemize, to balance. Wow. The devil. Oh, look at this. Oh. Wow. The tower. Now that's interesting. Oh, there's a, a tower in the background has been struck down, but this one still stands. Huh. The star. Wow. The moon. Sorry, I, I got distracted. I was looking at it. It's gorgeous. The sun. Oh. Feel that passionate gooiness of glory. What? I don't even know. But I love it. Judgment. The world. I am really liking all the uh, like panthers and shit in this. The panthers, um, the crow, the snakes, all of them have significance to me. I'm so glad I watched Lisa's live and said I needed this deck. Okay, so let's see. I don't know. Scepters, so these, this is the fire sign. Let's see, is there... Sorry. Okay, so scepters are the wands. Grails are the cups. Knives are the swords. And skulls are the pentacles. So this is the... 
Ace of Scepters. Oh, the Two of Scepters. This is the card of the deck in where my um, Sun Sign and Midheaven are. Three of Scepters. Oh, she's hot. Ow, I'm crashing. Oh, there's the Sun Glyph right there. The, the thing that looks like a boob right there on the sail. The boob on the sail is actually the glyph for the sun. That's probably because in the sun is in exaltation in the sign of Aries. And this is clearly, yeah, this is sun and Aries. So what's this? This is Mars. There's Mars here, um, but this is the sun and Aries, because there's the sun and there's Aries. I love this. Four of scepters. I love this. This feels, this deck. Okay, this is going to sound weird, or maybe I just think it sounds weird, but this deck feels highly spiritual to me like there's there feels like a lot of spiritual reverence which I suppose isn't that weird you know five of scepters so if you get this my cards are sticking a little bit you just gently give them a zhuzh six of scepters seven look at this so this is leo it's leo there on the shoulder this is mars and leo this i see mercury sagittarius mercury and sagittarius i could spend a lot of fucking time playing playing with this shit the nine of scepters can't get it The moon in Sagittarius. Oh, so this is my, this is a card that, like, my wife. My wife has a moon in Sag. Oh, my God, my camera is rebelling. Everything is being wobbly. I'm so sorry, folks. Moon in Sag. Here's more Sagittarius right there, right above her sexy butt. Sexy tush. Uh, Saturn in Sagittarius. This Saturn in Sagittarius, that's interesting. This is one of my lifetime stalker cards. I love it. I, and I'm thrilled to have a card that doesn't play into the Ten of Wands traditional meeting because a lot of what people read in the Ten of Wands is the burden. And I think a lot of the passion gets forgotten. And with good reason. Sometimes the passion is overwhelmed by the burden but the passion is there so we have lord okay so let's see um suits okay court cards the lords so these are like the knights the, the queens are the queens. The princes are the kings. And the daughters are the pages. So those are in a weird order. So for RWS type, it would go daughter, lord, queen, prince. Very strange, but... I'm thrilled that this could bridge me into Thoth because I really want to learn it. So I'm, I'm extremely thrilled about that. Daughter of Scepters. Love it. I'm just looking for a glyph. I like hunting for the glyphs. Lord. Queen. Oh, she's... 
She looks like she would either give you a real good time or poison you. I love it. And then we have the uh, prince. So this would be equivalent of the king. The grails. So this is the cups. Interesting that there's so much green in this. Two. There's Venus. Venus in Cancer. Sexy as hell. This deck, I'm having feelings. All sorts. I'm feeling... This deck feels dark and fiery and sexy and amazing. I love it. The Three of Grails. I love this. Look at this little, like, kitty thing. Um, I wonder what this one... Oh, this is Mercury. Mercury, um... I'm not in Cancer. Mercury in Cancer. This is Four of Grails. So the Four of Cups is the Moon in Cancer. Five of Grails. Wow. It's fucking creepy. I love how it's like Medusa in the reflection. It's like her reflection is showing... It's like the song from Mulan. When will my reflection show who I am inside? Inside, she's a lot more powerful than she's than she thinks she is. She's forgotten, and this is Mars and Scorpio. That, yeah, I, yes. Yes, yes, here for it, yes. I am an astrologer. I do do astrology stuff. You can check out my website. Six of Grails. Seven, yes, the Gorgon Medusa vibes. This is Venus in Scorpio. Oh, look at him. Ooh, my goodness. Wow. That's the Eight of Grails, the Nine of Grails. Oh, spicy. It's spicy. I fucking, oh my God, I'm dying. It's so good. Mm, this is uh, Mars and Pisces, the Ten of Grails. And then we have the daughter grails, the lord of grails. Oh, that, that makes me sad, the Medusa head. The queen of grails. Love this posture. What? Who owns the whole world while still being slightly subtle? Oh my god. And the Prince of Grails. They are quite the combo. Ace of Knives. So this is the swords. Well, there's like a glyph here on the handle I don't recognize. Two of Knives. This is Libra. What in Libra though? Hmm. Um, oh, the moon in Libra. Oh, this is mine. This is my moon sign. The two of swords. Sure, sure. Three of knives is... Where is it? Saturn in Libra. Four of knives. Um, Jupiter in Libra. Five of Knives. Oh boy. This is quite the picture. <sighs> hmm. This is Venus in Aquarius. There's the Aquarius right at his butt crack. The Six of Knives. Uh, Mercury in Aquarius. Seven of Knives. This will be the moon in Aquarius because there's the moon and this is going like this is the Deccan wheel 
Oh my goodness. Well, hello. You are interesting. Eight of knives. Now we're in fucking Gemini. We're going to see my Mars card soon. Um, okay, what are you? Where are you? This just, I'm only seeing, off oh, Jupiter and Gemini. Nine. This is Mars and Gemini. Oh, so this is, that's funny. This is the energy of my Mars. And so it's, I guess it's not quite the Deccan wheel, but this is the Deccan my Mars is in. And this is equivalent to the sun in Gemini. Okay. Daughter of Knives. Queen. Oh, these crows are everything. Oh. Daughter, Lord, Queen, and Prince. And now the pentacles or the skulls. Love this color. Look at these beautiful purple roses. Ace. This Jupiter and Capricorn. The Two of Pentacles. Um, this is Mars and Capricorn for the Three of Pentacles. The Sun and Capricorn is the Four of Pentacles. Taurus and Mercury, or Mercury and Taurus is the Five of Skulls. Um, I think this is supposed to be the Moon and Venus. Saturn and Taurus. Saturn and Taurus. Sun in Virgo. Eight of Skulls. Uh, Venus in Virgo for the Nine of Skulls. Mercury in Virgo for the Ten of Skulls. Then we have the Daughter of Skulls. She's really pretty. The Lord of Skulls. The Queen of Skulls. And the Prince or the King. Um, wow. Now that I snuck in some thumbnail snap shots, I am going to save these rose petals. I think I'm going to leave a couple to go with my vampire tarot is kind of like an offering. Um, but the rest, I, I got them as a spell ingredient. Um, just wow. Just completely and utterly wow. This deck is astonishing. And I got some intuitive hits there that I wasn't necessarily expecting. Uh, Shuffle's really good. It's glossy, but it's not too bad. It feels similar to Llewellyn cardstock. Barb, thank you so much for sending this to me. I was going to buy it, and um, it's just incredibly sweet that you chose to send it to me. Um, this is... I'm... I'm, I'm a bit lost for words. Today's, today is packing a wall up. Let me tell you. Oh, I want to pull a card and just see. Oh my gosh. I think the vampires want to play. I also, I think what I'm going to do, I want to get a box for these. I want to get a little, like, just just a, a box. I think I'll get one from the dollar store, hopefully, and paint it. And These feel like they need a special home. Um... Ace of Skulls. 
Let's see. I'm just... <sighs> Expect a new beginning or a new consciousness that readies you for a life which is richer both externally and internally. The Ace of Skulls expresses material force in working with the physical, and uh, which leads us towards tangible results. Our harvest is assured and enterprises will flourish as wealth and abundance is the basis of this practical energy. Building a firm and stable base for growth is now possible, whether that means financial stability the undertaking of a new project, or a newer existing relationship becoming more secure. A seed of productivity has been planted, and the time is right to build a foundation that is practical and centered. At this time, we should not look for theatrical or fanciful answers, but a clear, rational approach to discover and develop our potential. The vampiric power of the Ace of Skulls draws earthly writ enrichment into us and leads us into the fullness of life. We should now savor the joys of material existence in our own physical bodies, enraptured in our senses and in the beauty of nature. Our dreams are turning into something tangible as our efforts are fruitful and bring us greater prosperity. Consider which areas of your life would you like to make richer. This card describes the alliance of the sun and the earth, which can be understood as living beings. It's astounding. Now, the one other thing I'm very curious about is in this... Um, there's too often we mutter the waters by frantically stirring to find answers. When we surrender to stillness, the waters naturally clear. The same is true when we surrender our logical and analytical mind to silence in order to listen for the pulse that guides us to the light. In this respect, the Tarot of Vampires is a wonderful tool to step by step, our, to sidestep our rational self perspective view and allow our deeper unconscious self to reveal truth through magical instinct, imagination, and dreamscapes. These truths, which may have been altered or suppressed by the critical mind, allow us a wider understanding of a situation and greater freedom to explore it. When our deep self or our unconscious vibration is more closely in sequence with the flow of the everlasting source, we understand the essence of things more clearly and how a situation or problem relates to the whole of life. Um, this, um, this book, um, I, personal card portraits, that's what I was looking for. Um, I stopped and read that because I saw the word surrender and hello, we already talked about that. Um, so there's the calling, create a personal vampire name, the death dynasty card, um, and the vampire clan. I do plan to do this. I am, I am, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed and in the best possible way. So I am going to go and finish this up now because I need to just sit. Um, this deck is incredible. Ian Daniels, if you're watching this by any chance, this is fucking, oh my God. It's a, oh. This is amazing. This is really, really something special. Um, But now I'm going to go. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up to let me know if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell notification. And you can check out my description box, yada yada, all the stuff. Please support. I'm tired and I need to go now. I'll see you all very soon. Lots of love. Bye.